Hello everyone, my name is Benjamin Schumann and in this video series I want to show you something new. You may be aware that AnyLogic comes with a good set of network capabilities. So typically when you build a factory in AnyLogic or hospital or many of these kind of examples, very often you start out by drawing a network. So you have something like this and then you tell your agents to move to a specific point in the network. Now in the background, this is really trivial. All you do is you basically tell an agent to use the move to method and you specify a specific node in the network. Now what happens in the background is that any logic actually has a pathfinding algorithm uh, built in. It is the shortest path. It will find the shortest path through the network. That's all nice and well for basic use cases. But recently I had a client, a vaccine manufacturer, and we wanted to model their uh, warehouse operations and internal transportation. So we could have easily drawn a network, but the problem with that is we were not able to get actual performance statistics about parts of the network. How often is this part being used? Who uses this part? When is it being used? When is there a lot of activity? When is there no activity? That's one problem. The second problem is I had, we have very little control of what this path is allowed to do or not to do. So the, basically the only option you have in any logic is to turn paths bidirectional or unidirectional. If you use the material handling library, you have two more things like limiting number of transportations and speed limits, but that's it. There's no further details. You cannot say only small forklifts are allowed to go through here, but not humans. You cannot give specific um, speed limits. You cannot close paths temporarily or reopen them. All these kind of more advanced things is basically not built in. And it's not just only not built in, it's actually basically impossible to do that. Or very, very, very hard. Then after this vaccine manufacturer client, I started another study with an electric car manufacturer and it was basically the same problem. They wanted to model their factory and all the movements within the factory, little forklifts, people moving around, transporting materials to the different stations. And we were basically stuck with the same problem. How do we do this? So I decided basically, all right, let me not reinvent the wheel several times. What I'll do is, uh, aside from these studies, I will design a base model that does something unique and I will basically share it with the world. This is what this is all about. So what is this unique thing? Let's have a look. The model that I am I will be introducing to you in this series is basically a different approach to network pathfinding. It is a purely agent-based approach to network pathfinding. Let's have a look. First of all, we have our network still. It's exactly the same network that we saw previously but you might already notice it looks different. Not only that, it actually seems to be interactive now. I can hover over those things and they seem to be responding. This is not something you get with default uh, networks. There is no on-click uh, API call for the advanced viewers. So it doesn't work. Here it does work. So I can actually click on things and do things with my network items. Now, the key philosophy of what I want to teach you here is that we are actually abandoning any logic networks. We do use it as a starting point because it's a really great way to draw networks, you know, and interact with them at design time in any logic in the IDE. Um, if you have a drawing of your factory or whatever, you can easily convert that into an any logic network. So it's a good starting point. But what we want to do is fundamentally different. We will actually translate your AnyLogic network into a purely agent-based network, meaning every node and every path is an agent. And then once we have that, we will use an external pathfinding library. So we have full control of how paths should be found. Then we'll be able to say, find me the shortest path, we'll be able to say, find me the cheapest path. You might be able to give every path in your network different costs. 
or you say find me a path that is suitable for my agent type. I'm a big fat AGV, so I cannot use a path through some slim narrow hallways or whatever. All these kind of things are then possible. So in this video series, in this video I'll show you the final outcome and we'll have a little play. In the future videos I will show you the actual model and what it's doing. How do we convert an AnyLogic network into a purely agent-based representation, so we have a full grasp on each part of the network. And then how do we make moving agents, like trucks or whatever, actually use our agent network, our network agents, to move across that network, completely independent of any logic pathfinding, completely independent of any logic networks. Let's get started. Let's have a look at the actual model itself. So when you start, the first thing that you can do is to select an origin. Where should our agent start? And you can just click on any node that you like. We'll just use the same one that we had previously. Second step is to select a target. Where do you want to go? And let's move down here. And then we'll just tell the agent to move there. And it's doing basically the same thing that we've seen previously. It looks identical, but under the hood, it is 100% new. It is 100% custom. It is 100% in your control now. You control how the paths are found. You control uh, each individual part of the network. So let's have a look at what you can do actually in this example model. First of all, you can toggle showing names or not names. Not really relevant, but might be useful for debugging. Um, the other thing you can do is to enable editing edges. Now I cannot select any origins or targets, but if I click on a network path, you can see it actually changes into a blocked path or a blocked edge. I untick this again so I get back into my normal mode of moving. And now if I tell my truck, please move from this node over here, this path is now blocked. If I try to move, it will tell me I could not find a valid path. There's no way in this network to go there because this path is blocked. If I unblock this again, just go into the editing mode, uh, click on it again. So now it's unblocked and try to move there again. And it's not a problem. It will now move to the red path. Now, the other thing you might have noticed is the truck just took a extra route here. And that is because this one path here is a one directional edge. This is actually one of the characteristics that we implement and take over from our AnyLogic network. So in the AnyLogic network itself, I actually said this path, this path should not be bidirectional. All other ones are bidirectional. This one is unidirectional, only from left to right. You can see it in the little arrow there. So if I tell my agent to move from this node to the red node, it will happily move along the one directional path. But if I tell it to move from this node to this node, it will take the detour the long way around because it's one directional. So again, this is not using any logic network finding anymore. This is a purely custom implementation. So this is how the model works. That's basically all you can do with it. But what I will show you in the coming videos is first of all, how do we translate an any logic network into purely agents. Each part of the network will be an agent. How do we do that? The second part will be how do we use the external pathfinding Java library? It's called JGraphT. And how can we use that to tell the agent how to find their path? In this example, we'll use a simple Dijkstra algorithm, cheapest, cheapest path or shortest path, whatever. Um, but I'll show you how to use other algorithms as well. And then we'll bring it all together and I'll explain to you how this is a great baseline for your future models. I would go as far, well, first of all, I will be using this as the baseline for the vaccine client and for the electric car manufacturer client. And I think any serious simulation model, so not, not simple research models or something like that, or little toy models, but if you build something seriously and you would normally use uh, and any logic network, and you would normally make your agents move across the networks, I would argue you should be using this baseline model instead, because you then have 
the full capability of the network. You just draw it like you always do. But when you click play, it actually translates into a purely agent-based representation and you have full control over everything. You can easily take statistics of your network path. You can easily block things. You can easily uh, give them characteristics. You know, whatever you do with agents, you can do now with your network path. Plus, you have control of how the pathfinding should work. Um, so let's let's have a go. I look forward to seeing you in the next videos. Thanks a lot.